some news stuff real quick. Um, we got to make fun of J.D. Vance a little bit, but I wanted to clip to this one little thing real quick. We'll talk about it for a second, and then I want to move to some other stuff. But uh, as we were talking about before, that kind of hierarchy system of, of conservatives where they believe that some people deserve more rights than others. There should be a hierarchy, right? Some people should rule and some people should serve. And the people that serve, it's just we get whatever they allow us to have kind of thing. That's kind of their method. If you don't believe me, Rachel Maddow covered a little bit of J.D. Vance's philosophy on the world. J.D. Vance says not only do conservatives need to, in his words, wake up, but what they need to wake up to is the fact that most of American life and culture um, should be, in his words, ripped out like a tumor. Those are, again, his words, not mine. Watch. Our leaders right like, now are mine. so corrupt and so vile that if you assimilate into their culture, you're assimilating into like garbage liberal elite culture. You're not assimilating into tra traditional American culture. And so I, I, you know, this is a tough, tough pickle for me. I don't even know what the right answer is here because you, you can't just teach these things. You can't teach that we live in a great country if the leaders are actively aligned against it. So almost the thing that you need to do, step one in the process, is to totally replace, like rip out like a tumor, the current American leadership class, and then reinstall some sense of American, you know, political religion. We need to rip it out like a tumor and then install political religion. <laughs> so, let's talk about, Ooh, over okay. talk about overthrowing the government, essentially. I mean... It's just wacky stuff. We'll watch a little bit more because it's just it's just weird stuff. I just want to get into this a little bit. Oh man, um, I, I mean, you know, <laughs> because let me expand on that just a second. Because yeah, it's, yeah, no, it's no. And, and I'm going to give you a little cover here because it's not just. I mean, obviously elections. That's one thing. OK, but unfortunately, this evil leadership class has already taken over all of our institutions. Current pipeline is to turn them into those people that we just called evil and disgusting. How yeah. do we, aside from elections, how do we rip out this leadership class? So these institutions are corrupted and rotted to the core. This elite ideology is everywhere and in all the things. What other options do we have besides voting them out, which we're seeing is ineffectual? Yeah. So again, this this is like a tough question, but this is maybe the question that confronts us right now. You know, I, I there's this guy Curtis Yarvin who's written um, about some of these things. Knowing chuckle there. There's this guy Curtis Yarvin who's written about some of these things. This is Curtis Yarvin, who J.D. Vance is citing here as he is talking about the need to, you know, seize the universities, destroy, use the government to destroy businesses who aren't right wing. Um, talking about needing to, to rip out the American system like a tumor. Um, here, here's the guy he is citing as his, has his sort of uh, the, the, the source of his, his thinking on these matters. So I want to introduce this very complicated problem to a simple four letter acronym, which is RAGE. And RAGE stands for Retire All Government. Employees. <laughs> very, very, very simple. Now, the, the problem with this is, why have you never heard this before? Why has no one ever suggested, let's just get rid of this thing? You have a government in Washington. You're either for it or against it. Um, what is government? A government is just a corporation which owns a country. Nothing more, nothing less. It so happens that our, our sovereign corporation is very poorly managed. And, um, there's a very simple way to uh, replace that, which is what we do with all uh, corporations that have failed. We simply delete them. We haven't been able to do that with our government for two years. So it's gotten a little bit stale. We should delete the U.S. government because it's stale. It has been around for too long. We haven't been able to do that, meaning delete our government for 200 years, so it's gotten a bit stale. It's been... <laughs> so what I get into that for a second because he goes on and he makes another quote later i'm going to not play the whole thing but he makes another quote later about we need to get over our fear of dictators and install the dictator so basically it's the same thing that we just went over with patrick Bet david wanted about his taxes there shouldn't be democracy 
I should get to decide how much I pay because I'm rich. And the rest of you shouldn't get to decide. This is kind of J.D. Vance's thing. The problem is, is we have all these evil people in government that are these evil leaders that are making us all evil, right? Then how did they get there? They got elected. Oh, so the problem is, is elections. We need to just get rid of those. And here's my guy, Curtis Yarvin, to tell you about, yeah, we just need to get rid of the officials, the elected officials, and just replace them with our own dictators. <laughs> it's the whole project, man. I've been saying it this whole time we've been on this show. Lacey's been saying it over and over. Conservatives believe in hierarchy. They believe that certain people should be better. And the irony is they always believe that they, the ones saying it, are going to be at the top. And it's it's amazing to me because it's it's sort of like it's sort of like with kids and and I work with teenagers so I feel like I can distill this down to teenage stuff sure. frequently. Um, you know how teenagers always think that they're the exception, they're the person that the bad thing isn't going to happen to, right. and and young adults think this too, but. This is where we see this playing out. They all think they're going to be at the top. They also all think they're not going to be on the receiving end of the shitstorm part of whatever happens. Right. You know, the bad thing's not going to happen to me. I'm the one up here, so I'm fine. And you see this regardless of whether or not they're actually in the group that would really be up there. Somehow they put themselves there mentally making it okay right well it's like the patrick Ben david thing before and i kind of pointed that it's like dude you're a persian immigrant your kids are half persian do you really think you have a place in the future of white nationalist america do you really think that in trump's america you have a fucking place in their future uh, well, if he does, he better be prepared to buy it because he's gonna. It's gonna be a very, very expensive place for him to manage to get to. He's too. Brown. He's worried about being taxed. He's gotta. He's gotta figure out how he's gonna buy that spot because it it would not be given to him um, easily. And even then, they're not gonna want to do it because he's not white. This is the same problem J.D. Vance has. His wife is Indian. His kids are half Indian. Does he really think there's a place in the future for his children? In the future he's pushing? Does he really think that? Or does he just not give a shit? I, I think probably he thinks, again, like... I'm not going to affect Frequently, me. young adults and teenagers, I'm the exception. I'm the exception. Right? Yeah, I'm apply. so special, it doesn't apply to me, just all those people over there. Mm -hmm. Right? It's the same thing over and over and over again. Yeah. Well, do you want to take a quick break and then we'll prove that he's not the exception? <laughs> Sounds good. All right, we'll be right back. So, JD Vance, thinking that he's. <laughs> 